Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. Say, did you know that Abraham Lincoln could never be found guilty of any crime? Because he's innocent. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at border states from Shakos. Hello, everybody. We'll be back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a minute to tell you to go visit Galaxy of Games in West Jordan, Utah. It is Utah's newest game store. Uh, it's run by friends of mine. It's a great place, great selection, great prices, well-lit, clean bathrooms. If you go in there, ladies and gentlemen, and you tell them that I sent you, the Discriminating Gamer, and you use the promo code DDG, you'll get 10% off of your purchase. Check out Galaxy of Games. In border states from Shakos, two players take on the roles of either the Confederacy or the Union as they attempt to dominate the border states of Delaware, Maryland, West Virginia, Kentucky, and Missouri. Now, the game board consists of a series of tracks representing those different states. You're also going to have off to the side of the board some places for the cards uh, where they're going to be played and a lot of the fate of these states will be decided. Now these tracks have discs placed on them, and depending on whether they're closer to the Union side or the Confederate side, that is going to mean whether or not they are um, uh, controlled or influenced by the Union or the Confederate player. Uh, some of the Missouri discs are closer to the Union player at the beginning, the Delaware discs are closer to the Confederate player at the beginning. Now at the beginning of the game, you're going to go ahead and shuffle the battle cards. You're also going to go ahead and take a number of character cards, a deck of character cards that you'll shuffle. You'll also have various general blocks. Now you've got a little kind of uh, arch that you're going to place a number of them on. Uh, you're going to have four of them in front of you. You're also going to place a number of influence tokens in a bag. Now the first thing you're going to do is a preparation phase. Essentially, you're going to place uh, three battle cards on the battle board, and then depending on the number that is on there, it's going to say essentially how much influence that battle is going to be worth. But what you're going to do is you're actually going to draw that number of cubes from the bag, which represent the different states. You're going to place those then on the top of, the, uh, uh, of, of those cards. In addition to the intensity value, you will also place two additional state cubes on those cards. Now, next you're going to recruit. Now, as I say, you've got these six generals in this arc in front of you, and you're going to go ahead and you can take generals from either side. Uh, you can go ahead and recruit them that way, but you can't just take a general from the middle. You have to kind of go from the sides. Now, once per game, you can go ahead and play your president card. That will let you take a general from anywhere in your arch. Now, essentially, how the game plays is you're going to look at those battles. Then each player is going to select a general to uh, commit. They're going to go ahead and select a face-up and a face-down general. Now, these generals can only go in the spaces um, that they have accessibility to. That is, you've got one, two, and three space, and the generals have those numbers on them. You have to go ahead and pick a corresponding area for your face-up general. Now, your face-down general, you can actually place him with your face-up general regardless of uh, his number. Now, when you place your generals, you have to place them on the top of the card. If somebody else has another general uh, at the top, you're going to place them the next place down. Now, you're going to have a number of character cards, and without getting too much into it, these character cards kind of add a little bit of surprises. For instance, you can block attacks by putting a Bible uh, on a card. You can put an artillery piece out there to kind of make blocks neutral. You can reveal an opponent's face-down block and more. Now you're going to reveal blocks. One of the things you might have is an ambush. Your ambush, he can go ahead and uh, immediately essentially kill uh, one of the gem generals. So you remove your guy and you also remove uh, one of the uh, your opponent's generals. Now generally what you're trying to do is once you reveal your generals after ambushes and any other effects, you're going to go ahead and you are going to add up your score. How many 
points are your generals worth. Each general has a, a point value, and whoever has the most wins the battle. Now, depending on the numbers involved in the battle, the winner's going to get so many of the cubes, and the loser might get some of the cubes as well. If there is no loser, if only the winner was in that uh, area, then they get all of the cubes. Now, the winner is going to place all of his cubes in front of him on the respective tracks. The loser will do the same. And then you will begin moving your cubes toward you or away from you. If it's a wash, of course, they're going to stay where they are. But you're trying to get those cubes, you're trying to get those discs, rather, closer to your side and then lock them in on your side. Now, if a move causes a cube to leave the track into the player's control area, then they control it for the rest of the game. That point is locked in. Next, you're going to have some housekeeping and get ready for the next round. Now, there's a few ways you can win. As you lock uh, the state discs on your side, you score one point. At the end of five rounds, whoever has the most points wins the game. Now, there is a sudden death victory. If ever one side gets four state tokens of four different colors on their side, they win instantly. Or if they have five uh, state tokens of any color, they win instantly. So you and your friends are going back and forth. You are attempting to select generals to plan the battles. You're playing character cards. You are uh, getting cubes for those victories in the battles. You are using the cubes to influence the tracks, to move those states closer and closer to your side, to lock them in to secure victory. And whoever can get the most victory points wins. Border states. We'll get back in the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. So Border States is, um, frankly, it's an abstract game. Now, it's got this, this theme of the United States Civil War um, kind of painted on it. But uh, this is not a real theme-heavy game. Now, you have the different generals, of course, who have some different abilities. Uh, the ambush, there's a siege ability. Um, and then, of course, there's the different numbers and the different battles they can participate in. Now, that's kind of interesting. But, again, it's, it's, it's more kind of feels like a numbers game than, than, a, uh, you know, than a real uh, solid thematic game. Um, Still, it's it's kind of fun to see some of the artwork, to see some of the um, you know the generals that you know, the politicians that you know, uh, the cards and what have you. It, it's fun. It's it's on a very surface level. It's evocative of the Civil War, but but don't go into this expecting a very deep Civil War theme. Now that's okay because this is not a terribly long game. Um, it, it goes by pretty quick. There's a bit of a learning curve. In fact, I was surprised. I, I thought this game would be a little more intuitive, and there is a bit of a learning curve. Um, just kind of with how some of the, the, the uh, generals are, are placed and then how those battles are resolved. That's, uh, there's a little more to that than I had originally thought. Now, don't misunderstand me. It's not this big, complicated thing. It's not at all. I just assumed it was going to be a little bit more straightforward than it was. Um, but again, it's a quick game, and for what this game does, for what this game is, it's, it's fun. I, I enjoyed it. It's, it's, a, it's a fun, simple, little... Um, uh, abstract game with this kind of light Civil War theme pasted onto it. But if you enjoy that, if you like abstract games, if you like um, kind of these, I don't know, it's not really area control, but these kind of battle control, uh, you know, that, that leads to these these rewards, um, I think you might enjoy this one. Uh, I had fun with it. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Border States is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on BoardGameGeek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out, please subscribe, and please leave a thumb for this video on BoardGameGeek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, one of my favorite quotes was from Mark Twain. When the end of the world comes, I want to be in Kentucky. Because things happen there about 20 years after they happen everywhere else. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. One Japanese reserve must go to the Southwest Pacific Theater. Down to Papua New Guinea. Ooh, good shot.